Welcome to Vancouver Business Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. This evening, Francesca Anastasi is training us on how to power up our business with strategic social media content. Francesca, is it okay if we start with a couple of get to know you questions? Absolutely. All right. If you had to start all over again, right from scratch, what would you invest in first? Before starting anything? Before starting anything. Before starting anything, I would invest in market, learning about marketing, learning it, learning everything that I could okay. on marketing. That would be my first investment. How would you do that? How would you learn about marketing from a from a place of zero? I would actually take courses. That's what I would do. Okay, interesting. Yeah. And the second question I have for you is, what would you say to somebody who wants to launch a business, but is told often by their family that their idea is crazy? I'd say, don't listen to your family. Go for your idea because the pain of regret is not worth it and you just don't know where you could be ending up so follow, follow your gut okay listen to your intuition audience if you have questions during francesca talk please type them into the chat and whenever i detect a transition in francesca's presentation i will pose your questions at that point Rest assured, by the end of Francesca's talk, you will have received answers to all your questions. Uh, the video recording of Francesca's uh, training will be published later this evening, and I'll sign, I'll give everybody a link, at, which will take you to the VBN YouTube channel. Uh, and I'm telling you this so that you really don't need to take notes if you don't want to, because you will be receiving a recording. Francesca, are you ready to rock the stage? We're ready to rock it. Then the stage is all yours. Okay. Let's hear it. Yay. <laughs> Thank you, Roger. And welcome, everyone. Um, happy to be here tonight and share what I've got to share with you guys. So I know this is a, a very um, important topic pretty much for anyone who has a business and anyone who's got clients or wants clients. So I want to congratulate you for, whoops, we're going here, congratulate you for um, taking the time to be here. I know some of you are busy, you have your full-time job, you have your part-time job, and you're starting a business on the side. So the fact that you're here, taking the time to learn how to, the, how to do your social media, maybe you already know how to do it, you're just looking for some pointers. Um, you're in the right place. And I'll be happy to answer any of the question that you may have if I don't cover anything during, if, if I don't cover your, uh, your question by the end of the session or throughout the session, as you ask, feel free to uh, stay and ask me later if you want it privately. I'll be more than happy to help you with that. So social media, it's big, big word. And today, this is probably, social media is probably the, one of the most powerful marketing resources that we have that we can leverage as a tool to our benefit to, to expand the visibility of our brand, to increase our following, increase our audience, and also the ultimate goal is to get clients and referrals. So, exciting. Now, I don't know if you've been on social media before. I am just going to guess that you, ha you have some sort of social media account somewhere, possibly maybe just personal. But when we're starting out with social media, typically what happens is we get on social media for personal use. We, we connect with friends, with family. Maybe we want to do some networking or want to read a blog or write a post a blog or just sharing you know, sli uh, pictures or stuff that's happening with the family. And that's pretty much how I started with social media. I did not see social media as a tool for business. And the exciting thing is that it is. But maybe 
like me, at times, you can sit in front of a computer when you say, okay, now I want to use social media for business. And you sit in front and you get all ready to, 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 to post and you go, I don't know what to post that would attract my clients. I don't know what it would make uh, anyone interested in what I have to post. Or you post something thinking that th there's going to be some sort of response and nothing happens and you get frustrated. So can anyone relate to that? <laughs> right? I can see the heads going up. Yep. <laughs> all right. And sometimes this is what you want to do because you spend all this time either prepping your social media and putting it up and nothing happens or just staring at that terminal and not, not knowing what to do with it. So today, hopefully I'm here to give you some, some ideas on how to make that process of using social media a lot easier when it comes to promoting your business. Here, my mouse keeps going is once you have, once we have our social media, once we create a flow, once we create a system for ourselves, whether this is for yourself or you have somebody else do it for you, once you have a system in place, it makes everything work better, smoother, faster. And in the end, it actually saves you time. And the, and the main goal is to save time and be as effective as possible in that time that we are putting into this. Okay, so social media. Powerful, powerful tool. Now more than ever, everybody's online, right? And there's so many things that uh, social media connects to. So social media is not just social media. Social media connects to anything that's on the web. So that there is this, there is this. Uh, it's not just contained inside the social media, but you also have. Uh, if you're sharing an article that is posted on a blog, that's coming from outside of social media and then it's going into the social media. So you have this in and out uh, power of connecting that is not just restricted inside the social media platform itself. So like I said before, this, but what I'm going to share with you works for either if you're doing it yourself or if you're delegating. If you're delegating your social media and you want to delegate everything, it is important that you know what it is that is being delegated and how it should be running because you want to make sure that what is being done aligns with your business and with your brand. All right, so what this is what we're going to cover. We're going to cover on why, what are the benefits of ha having a social media presence for our business. We're going to look at where, which platforms, I know this is a popular uh, question that I get, which platform is best to promote my business? And then what type of content is best for your business or what type of content should you post? And when is, you know, when, when should you schedule? And then how, how to do this? So the strategy around it. So are you excited? Because I'm excited. <laughs> Let's start with the why. Why do we want to use social media? Because like I said before, it is one of the most powerful uh, platforms that we can use and leverage to grow our business. And it is a platform that should not be dismissed. Now, if you, um, you may have, you may know this, that you probably never seen a commercial on TV for Lamborghini right? Because Lamborghini only advertises to people that don't necessarily watch TV. That's why Lamborghini has never run a TV ad. But guess what? Lamborghini has presence on social media. So that should tell you something. So do not dismiss the power of, uh, of social media as far as marketing goes, because if Lamborghini is on, on that plat on the platform, of all social media platforms, then you should be on social media as well. Your business should be on social media. So intentional strategic planning equals growth when it comes to social media. You want to get increased engagement, which positions you as the go-to expert in your business. It can create an integrated experience, interact, interactive connection with your current and potential clients, because eventually that's what you want. You get potential clients 
to connect with you, get to know you, and then eventually become clients. You want to increase your organic reach, ideally without paying for ads. Sometimes we have to do that depending on which platform we're using and depending on what it is that you're promoting or what it is that you want at the end and at the end of the day. But for the most part, you don't want to have to pay for ads constantly. You want to grow your reach organically as much as you can. And you also want to increase your brand awareness. So the more you are on social media, the more your brand gets visible. And that's how we increase that visibility. And we also want to increase sales. So current and new customers. So where to post? The million dollar question, where is the best place to have it, uh, to promote, to connect, to engage and get our clients? Well, that's a million dollar question. But it's not that hard to answer actually. So let's look at the platforms of the most popular platforms. So we have, as you can see here, monthly active users, Facebook as of 2020, these are this year's stats, has 2 billion and 23, uh, 2 billion, over 2 billion users uh, of, of monthly active users, 1.9 billion on YouTube, 1 billion on Instagram, 642 million on Tumblr, 500 million on TikTok, 335 million on Twitter, 330 million on Reddit, 294 million on LinkedIn, and 250 million on Pinterest. And guess what, Lamborghini is on, has a Pinterest account as well. I don't know why I'm picking a Lamborghini, but just to give you an example. So which platform should you, which, which platform should you use? Ideally, you need to know where your clients are because there are a lot of people on each one of these platforms but if your clients or your potential clients, let's say never go on Reddit and that's where you go, you're wasting your time. If you are a Facebook user, but your clients are Instagram users, you posting on Facebook is gonna be a complete, well, it may not be a complete waste of time because Facebook is big enough. It is the biggest platform. So chances are you're probably gonna find your, your customers there, but if they're, let's say a younger crowd, uh, potentially they're not, on, they're not hanging out on, on Facebook, even if they may have an account. So you wanna know where are your potential clients or your existing clients, what are they using? So if you say, well, I don't know, well, it's, you may want to ask them, what is the social media platform that you use the most? Ask them. Um, it's okay to ask them, just be curious. People like to know People like to know, um, people like to share, not, not, not know. People like to share about themselves. So even if you put it on whatever social media platform that you're using, uh, wherever you know that your clients are, you can put that question, what is your favorite social media platform? And they give you the answer. So you don't, it's not really rocket science. You don't have to pay into market, market research. You can find out just by asking that simple question. As you can see, there are a lot of users on a lot of these. But as I said, you want to make sure that the platform you use is the one where most of your potential clients are. Because you may have a variety of clients where some are on LinkedIn and some are on Instagram and some are on, on uh, Twitter. If your clients are spread across and you, you can't determine that one group is more predominantly on Facebook, then you want to be on multiple platforms. So it's not just cut and dry where you say, I'm only going to use Facebook because that's the platform I like and that's where my clients are. But if your clients are in more platforms, then my advice is to use multiple platforms. Makes sense? Francesca, a related question to what you're talking about from Daya. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't the platform you choose be the one that fits your intention for your business or work? And what the what about the integrity of the platform is and does it align with yours? Yes. So the that's a great question. The 
the platform you use definitely has to align with your values. So if you're using a platform that does not align with your values, then don't use that platform. But then again, it, you want to, if, if you're using a platform that aligns with your values, then your clients, if you have your branding done correctly, your, your clients align with your values. So your clients are probably not inclined to use the platform that you're not, comf that you're not comfortable uh, using. Does that make, does that answer your question? Gaia hasn't responded, so I think you can move on. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So just use the platform that you feel good about, but you want to make sure that if, if, the, if your clients are not there, then you have to let them know. So you have to make it, that's the other thing, right? You have to make, you have to let people know where it is that you are, where they, where they can follow you. So that's the other question way. from Chris. Any comments about Alignable? Um, I don't really have a comment about Alignable. I'm not an active user on it. I'm personally, so I, I really don't know much about it other than I do know that I have an account and once every blue moon, I get a request to <laughs> somebody wants to connect. But other than that, I don't have any feedback on that. No further questions. OK. So the average time online, as, um, as it's kind of obvious nowadays, it is increasing, especially through this whole pandemic. We, people are not going to work. Our work schedules have changed. Even if we're working from home, we have more access to uh, being online because you're doing less, less things outside, which means the more people are online, the higher chance for them to see you. So you have to take that opportunity that it's not just you being online more, but your client and your potential clients are online, uh, are spending more time online as well. So now you are not only you got this opportunity to being seen, but you're also competing with other people that are also doing the same thing. So you have to work a little bit uh, more strategically to make sure that you are seen and don't get lost in the noise. Okay, so there we go. We're staying online, chatting online, Zooming online like we are doing right now. <laughs> this is pretty much, I think, uh, most everyone's days right now. So whether it is for personal or business, this is where people are spending time. So when you're on social media, um, you want to make sure that your social media presence is there. Do not miss out on that. All right. So business media versus social media. It's very important to make a distinction between the two. It's very easy to think of social media. We get on social media. I'll speak for myself. I've done this. I've been guilty. And I don't know how many of you have been guilty of the same thing, but it's very easy to get on social media. And, and next thing you know, you start looking at things that are not related to your business. Um, so very important to block time that is specifically for business media and also to separate the two. So when you want to be social on social media, you need to have that separate from your business media. I'm going to um, address Facebook in this case specifically because it is the uh, Instagram, same thing, and some of the other pl platforms. So if you have a business or you're planning on having a business or you're starting a business, it is imperative. It is 100% imperative that your personal stuff and your business are not all mushed together. They need to be separate. They need to be, even though it's, even if it is your personal brand, you want to make sure that anything that you have that is personal about your kids and your personal life and your family does not get, does not overlap into your business. You want to make sure that you promote your business in separate accounts. So, for example, if you have a Facebook profile, you also want to have a business page. And on your personal profile, if you are, if you are mixing business and personal, I strongly recommend that, you, that you're very, very careful about putting the business with the personal in your personal um, 
profile. Reason for that is, well, number one, Facebook can decide to flag you, doesn't like you doing that because they want you to be on the page. But also what happens is you say, well, I want my personal profile because it's from my family and that's where I share my stuff with my family and my kids and my friends and whatever. And it never fails. There will be people that even though they're following your page, they will also want to follow you on your personal just because they want to be friends with you. And now you're mixing, you're getting this mix that can become a little bit intrusive and you don't want, you don't want that. So if you're going to allow people into your personal profile, then make it public and create an additional personal profile that is specific, specific for your family and friends. And you keep that one totally private. So what you share on your personal that is public you can still share some things that are personal so people can get to know you, but you don't have to reveal things that could, um, that could potentially kind of backfire or, you know, kind of get in the way of the safety of your family. So for example, my personal profile on Facebook, I used to make it all about everything. And then I realized that that was not a good thing. So I've had to separate it where now I don't post any, there are no pictures of my personal family. There are no photos of, uh, I, don't, I don't post anything of anything that's happening in my family because it's nobody's business really. So unless it relates to the business. So. Francesca, question. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've heard from, this is from Carol Lee. I've heard that uh, Facebook business pages aren't very effective as people don't really go there much. What have you found? It's true. <laughs> that is very true. The business pages are not as effective, but you can be strategic about them. And the more you post on those pages, the more the visibility uh, takes place. So just because it doesn't have as much as engagement, it's okay to put some, uh, some, a bit of money behind it to, to boost the visibility from time to time so that you can get more followers. And Yes, it's not the same visibility, but you do need to want, you want to have that page happening and you want to keep posting and you can always share from the page into your personal profile and into other pages or into other groups, which actually we're going to talk about in a minute. So I hope that answers your questions. But yes, it's true. Uh, that's because it is business and, you know, they, they, they want you, they want you to, to put some money behind it. But the good news is that Facebook of all the marketing and all, all the advertising dollars out there, Facebook is the cheapest, the cheapest form of advertising, even cheaper than Google ads. So I hope that answers your question. I'm not saying that you should, that you necessarily need to put um, money into it, but the more engaging your, your um, post and what you put in, the, the more visibility you will get. No further questions. Okay. So where do we post? inside the platform. So we go into our own accounts, obviously. Um, like I said, it could be your personal, but your personal professional, or it can be in your page. If it's your Instagram, your, your, your LinkedIn, in your own personal accounts. So it's one place where, where we obviously, that's the first place where we post. And then, or a profile in your groups. So if you create groups, that's another way to create some engagement is start creating groups that are geared towards your potential clients and what is of interest to them. So it doesn't have to be a paid group or a group where only paid clients go to. You can create groups of interest, common interest that fit with your brand that eventually leads to a sale. And you can obviously um, post on your pages. You can create events and then you can post inside those events as well. And here's the other thing. You can also use your posts whatever you created into your pages or wherever, wherever you're, you've created the content, where we've posted it, you can share that into groups that are related where the topics there kind of marry, sort of like what Roger said earlier, you have an alliance with, but you want to make sure that you have permissions to do that. So it's not a buy my stuff kind of thing, but you can have content that is of value to, um, to a group of people that may belong to a different group that would be more than happy to see your content and others related posts as well. So in, 
in this case is that you can actually share other people's posts from somewhere else to somewhere else if it enhances your brand and enhances your business. So what do we post? What in the world? I'm going to use my hands, Roger. <laughs> what the heck do we put on the social media? Whoops. So how personal do we want to get? We don't want to get too personal. Okay. Like, like I said before, we want to be professional. We still want to reflect our business. We still want to reflect our brand without, and we can be personal without being, you know, giving too much out. This is the ratio, how much personal versus how much business, because you do want to have a little bit of that personal so people get to know you and make it your business personable. But 80% of what you post needs to be growth focused content. Don't let that sit there for a second. Only 20% personal, 80% growth focused content. And that does not mean buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. Okay. It's nurturing and building an audience with content that they would be interested in learning that is related to what you do. A, uh, a uh, question from Bill. It's about what about old school news releases? Uh, businesses put out news releases, then social, then social media picks up on posts about. I do a lot of work with big businesses that post news releases mentioning me and my business, which generated a lot more business than my social media efforts. Okay, so just to clarify, is the is the question how many is your is your social media all about? Bill, could you unmute and clarify the question? Francesca's struggling with it as well. Yeah, I have um, to say that I didn't really do that much social media because I didn't really know what I was doing. Uh, and so what I was getting was, I mean, most of the people would say, okay, if you're an expert in something, go write a book and do you know, all the normal old school stuff. And I found that the people that are hiring you to do work generally don't have the time to figure out who you are and all that stuff. It's, it's a different kind of business. So I'm kind of wondering, if the, has the society changed so much that in order to get work with somebody that you actually have to know their family and know about that person? Are you buying the brand or are you just getting stuff done? That's really my question. Is, is there really a, still a dichotomy where are you selling stuff based on social media and that's your world or do you think that everybody needs to have the social media presence just to be able to get a job as a company for the company? I believe that everyone needs to have a social media presence. You don't have to put anything about your family at all. Um, like I was saying earlier, your personal stuff should be your personal stuff. You should have your privacy. Um, unless you're a personal brand, you don't have to put anything, anything at all personal but you do want that social media presence just because yes, things have changed that much and any credible business will have a social, that doesn't just having a social media presence doesn't mean that you have to be online 24 seven posting things. Just so that you know, you just need to have a social media presence that shows that you're active as a business because it's very common to want to look up a business when you, and also it has, SEO capability. So when you are on social media and somebody's searching for something, your business may come up in the search engine just because it's posted on social media. Pinterest, for example, is a huge, um, uh, has a huge response. So if you have a Pinterest account, I'm not saying that that's what you should have and it may not be the best thing for your business, but each social media platform can come up in a Google search. So if you search my name, it will come up on Google. You will see LinkedIn comes up, for example. I'm hardly ever on LinkedIn, just to give you an example. So yes, you do want to have that social media presence. You do want to have uh, an account somewhere. And then uh, you don't have to be on it all the time, but you just want 
to show that you are active. So you don't want to have a post that was like two months ago, then it looks like it's a business that is no longer active. So it shows, shows that you're alive and well. Does it make sense? Yeah, it, it, it does. But on the other hand, there are a lot of businesses, like I'll give you an example, like the Phantom of the Opera or, or you know, any of the K-pop bands for that matter, is there a bit, there are businesses that have a brand that doesn't have an actual star involved because they just don't want a star. I mean, that they're deliberately. And since I'm not so pretty and all of that stuff, I didn't want to be the brand for that company. I wanted, you know, I could go hire somebody that's pretty and do all the rest of this stuff as the face of my company. Uh, so that's the issue that I had was, well, I don't want to be the famous person because I'm not really that pretty. So you want somebody that is more photogenic and, you know, can speak well and all of that kind of stuff, as opposed to being, you know, Elon Musk or something. Uh, and there's plenty of other people um, that can, you know, kind of step forward and be the brand, for instance. Yeah, you, you, you can have, but Lamborghini doesn't have a face. We don't see the person behind Lamborghini. We don't see the face behind Coca-Cola, right? There are a lot of brands that don't don't necessarily have a person being the the main sp spokesperson, they can have different people. So you could have someone else be, you can have multiple people do different bits and pieces. You don't even have to have anybody. Your voice, you can be completely invisible and your brand is your brand. Your company is the entity, not necessarily your face. Yeah, that, yeah that, that's what I was pointing out was, was that, you know, that you don't have to be the, 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 the person, you know, the real person behind the brand. Because that might not always work for you. And but you are the real person behind the brand. You just don't, you don't necessarily want to show who the person is. That's right. Yeah, that's true. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You you can have social media presence without showing who you are or your identity. No one needs to know because it's the brand. The brand is the persona, right? That's all about branding. That's a whole other subject. So when you when you have a business, you have to decide. Who is the brand? Is the brand the person, personal brand, or is the business, does the business have its own entity and its own presence and its own personality that is, has nothing to do with you as the business owner? Make sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. No further questions. Okay. So as we see in, uh, in this image, authentic has been a word that has been thrown around a lot in the last couple of years. And vulnerable is another word that has been thrown around a lot around um, the past few years. I say, forget all these terms and don't even use them when it comes to social media. Just be genuine, number one. Sometimes when we say we want to be authentic, it actually comes across fake because everybody is using that word. <laughs> so just be you, just be genuine. And when it comes to the vulnerability factor, it's important to balance and not feel that by being vulnerable, you have to put it all out there and spill your guts and just cry your eyeballs out. And you have to remember one thing, because I've seen this, um, I've seen this a lot happening, this mistake happening on social media where everyone's been encouraged to be vulnerable and I'm totally, you know, for being honest and being open. But you have to remember that your audience is not your therapist. I've seen people use social media thinking that they're enhancing their brand, just putting all their problems, all their sadness and all their misery and all their frustrations. And that's what you see most of the time. And it actually starts creating a disconnect. So your audience is not your, uh, is not your therapist. So what, it, whenever you're vulnerable, you want to be very strategic about what am I going to share that is that is going to make me vulnerable, and how is my vulnerability and how is me being genuine in this moment going to create a relationship and a connection with my audience. That's your main goal. When you go online and, you, and you're vulnerable and, and you be yourself, you have to think about it in advance. You don't want to just get on, on, on there, either writing or filming or live streaming and just spilling it out there. If 
if there is no connection to what you do, what you offer, and, and it completely sidetracks. And it, it may even be attracting an audience that you don't even want in the long run. So then you can have to backpedal and say, these are not the people I'm actually aiming to have in my following. So be very, very careful with that and think about it in advance. So when you post something, questions about copyright earlier, about content, what exactly should we be posting? Well, the first question is before you post anything, you have to ask yourself, what's in it for them? What's in it for your audience from and not post that you're sharing? Uh, whether it's uh, a video or, or, or an article, whatever it is that you're posting, what's in it for them? Well, how are they going to benefit? Always think from their perspective versus your own perspective. It's very easy to get wrapped up in our own little bubble because we're so focused on getting the clients, wanting to make the sale, wanting to build this following, and we want the followers, we want people to like that, to like what we put out there. And the thing is, first and foremost, before we post, before we create anything, why are we creating it? And how are they going to benefit from it? What's in it for them? And it's not necessarily the sale. This is for every piece of content that goes out there. Okay. So is the content shareable? Is it engaging? Is it, is it the kind of content that requires a response where you're asking questions? Perhaps, um, like I was saying earlier, you can ask what, um, what's your favorite social media platform, for example, right? Or, uh, and that gives you some of the questions that you could put out there that can be disguised as you just general interest are actually marketing questions, marketing uh, research questions that for you that benefit you, but people are interested. People like to share about what they like. So those are kind of engaging. Um, you can ask for their opinion, certain things. So you want to post things that are interesting, sometimes entertaining, or depending on the industry that you're in, maybe always entertaining. Posts are informative, relatable, and educational. So these are kind of the most, uh, the ones that are going to give you the most bang for your buck as far as the time and effort you put into creating your content and what you put out there. So your content also must align with your business values. It actually surprises me how many people don't take the time to write down their business values. We get so focused on having a logo, business name, registration, marketing, everything, you know, doing this, doing that, creating our programs, creating our services, whatever it is, but we forget, we know what our values are here, but we forget to actually write them down. So it's very important. If you have them written down, you're going to see the little strategy I'm going to give you. It's going to save you a lot of time and it's going to help you create content that pulls in and attracts the right people for you, for what you do. Okay, so top 10 core values. So I, I think we have, I like to give you this one minute, if that's okay with you, Roger. I'm gonna like to get everybody to just one minute because I think that's the, all the time we have <laughs> that I can give you as far as this, this goes. I'd like you to write down your top 10 core values for your business and your top 10 core values that are your personal core values. So if you can get a piece of paper and just write on, on one side, 10 business core values, your business core values, and the 10 personal core values, and see how many of those cross over or match in between. So if I look at the time, is that okay, Roger, if I give them this, this exercise? Uh, sure. So sometimes the business values and the personal values are exactly the same. I would suggest you ask the audience to type them into a chat if there's something they'd like to share. They can do that. Uh... Is it recommend, oh, actually see a question is, is it recommended to post your business values on your business website? Yes, why not? Of course, it helps. 
but it's not necessary. So your business values don't necessarily have to be on your website. Uh, basically, you or your business need to be the living, breathing <laughs> of those values, right? So writing them down, having them on your website, that's great. Um, but the reason you want them writing written down, especially when it comes to your um, business values, you want them written down because they're going to be your guide for your social media posts. I'm going to show you how. So if you have 10 down, if you haven't finished, that's okay. You can finish it later. Sometimes we have to think about it. It's really important. These are very, very important um, to have nailed, to have them nailed down. If you can narrow it down to seven. So once you have your 10, come up with your top seven or your top five. But I would say come up with your top seven first. Okay, so the ones that are the most important to you. You can always have more values than that, but to just have the top ones um, on the top of the list. Okay, so what type of content should we post or can we post? There are lots of kind. There are all kinds of uh, all kinds of content we can we can post. We can we can write articles. We can share articles from other places. We can post images, photos, videos. We can do live streams, uh, audio files. Uh, we can share music, branded posts, posters, blog posts, promotional memes, quote images, infographics, polls, text only, events, ads. There's probably more, but this is this is <laughs> this is quite a few, uh, a lot of different things that you know, a lot of different formats. So you're not restricted to post always the same way. So that's actually the one 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 of the secrets, is that you want to make sure that when you post that you have a variety. So it's not always the same thing. You want to have, like, you don't want to have always text. And if you're putting images, you want to make sure that if you're always putting images, make sure that there's text with those images as well as captions that tie into the image. Now, depending on your business, you may find that you will lean more towards a certain type of post versus a different type of post. So for example, if you're in the music industry or if you're into the dance industry, then you're going to find that perhaps because those are more audio and visual type of businesses, then you're going to want to be heavier on those kind of posts because that's how you're going to pull your, your particular audience in versus, versus po uh, posts that are constantly just text, right? Any questions on this? No questions on this. Francesca, I think yeah. people, if they have a question, they'll type them into the chat. Okay. Okay. You don't you don't need to ask them for okay. questions. All right. So let's start with this. When we post, we want eye-catching posts. Did this catch your attention? <laughs> you want to post eye-catching posts. You want you want images. If you're posting images, you want things that attract attention. I'm going to give you some examples. High contrast, sometimes even minimal. Uh, minimalist works really well as well. So it doesn't have to be uh, always high contrast. Things that are interesting, the per curiosity, right? Or quotes, for example, here, these are a couple that, that, I've, that, I, that I put together. Uh, this is actually another way that you can reinforce your brand and put your voice out. It doesn't have, this is if you are a personal brand, you use your images. But if you're not a personal brand, if you're a business where you don't want your face around uh, at all, you can still have your, the essence and the messages without even having to put your name on them as long as, you, as, long as they look like your brand. So you have that consistency in, in your logo and, and, and the way it looks and feels. And also, if you're using images or posts that at first sight don't mean anything, if we just look at this, it means nothing, right? Okay, somebody's passing on the key. So whenever you want to, whenever you post something, you want to make sure that somehow it still relates to 
the content that you're putting with it. So the, the caption has to be, has to give deeper depth of meaning of what that post is. All right, let's go into strategy because I know that's what you want. <laughs> Different ways that you can plan your, your, um, your content is by, you can go by monthly themes or you can go by seasonal themes. So start breaking it down because if you're looking at a whole year of content planning, it can get really overwhelming. The idea is breaking it down. So we can start by breaking it down into either seasons. And then once you have down your seasons into monthlies. So you can have a list and you can start writing down based on what your business is, based on what you're going to be promoting. Because you, you'll know what your plan is for the year, right? So if you're, if you're promoting a program at some point in the year, you want to mark that in your calendar. So then you can start planning in advance what the themes are going to be around, let's say if you're planning, um, let's say for January, you're planning a goal setting workshop, just as an example. Then what you would want to do is in December, if it's in December, you'd probably start putting, okay, this is where we're, we're gonna be heading to into organizing and goal, goal planning. So you can start the theme on the, the month before. So you can have that in advance as a, as a prompt for you to what kind of content is going to be coming next. So you're not running from the seat of your pants. So other content ideas, uh, you want uplifting, motivational, instructional, you can have tips, you can take a screenshot of this, or you can rewatch the, you can rewatch the, the recording of this, uh, how to's your favorite things, some of highlights, some behind the scenes, you can, include your national and international days. So depending on where you are in the world, uh, you wanna make a note of those holidays, Thanksgiving coming up right now uh, for the US, uh, drills, if that's something that is your business, like if you're like music drills or dance drills, if that's in your industry, uh, jokes, shout outs, you can do shout outs. Um, you can share trends that are in your industry, Q and A's, giveaways, you can run a contest, fill in the blank, introduce yourself costume hacks for people or who are in performing arts, uh, taking polls, uh, caption requests. You can ask people, can you caption this for me? I need your help. I'm trying to brand myself or putting this or that. Uh, a trending topic that you can, you can talk about. Maybe you can share a testimonial. And if you want to share a testimonial from clients where you need to protect their identities, you can say, you can, you can, you can uh, keep their privacy. You can still share their testimonial without disclosing their names or the company names if they are a company. So you can ask them permission to share their testimonial and assure them that you're not going to share their name uh, for, for privacy. So. I've never had a problem with that. Um, I've had clients that say, I don't want to share my name. That's fine. So you, you can use those testimonials and you can put challenges out there. You can share some fun facts. Uh, you can have sneak peeks of things that are, that are about to come or something that you're about to release or did you know uh, or playlists for music if it's related again to music or anything that's related to wellness. So the, you know, the, as far as what to post and what type of content and there's all kinds of stuff. So we're not limited. Imagination <laughs> is not limited, but here are some prompts that hopefully will give you um, a good start. So hashtags, depending on which social media platform you're using, uh, you're going to want to use hashtags to increase your viewership, to help your search optimization makes it easier to be discovered. And also you can become part of a, a trending topic if you're using the right hashtags. And it also helps as reminders for recurring themes. So for example, we're gonna get into that in a second, but what you're gonna need to do next is to have a blank calendar. So whether it's paper or it's digital, in order to plan your social media, you want to have a calendar. And you also want to have a place to collect and organize your, your pre-posts so that you can uh, put that content in there and your ideas by themes and categories. When to post. All right. So remember the, the core values we talked about before? 
So this is where you want to put your core values. If you see this uh, calendar here at the bottom, we have theme and core value under each one of those columns. So each for each day of the week. So you decide from those top seven, your top seven core values, you assign one day per value. So if your value is, if one of your values is integrity, you can choose which day of the week you think would be the best day to have that value. So you say Sunday's integrity, for example, uh, if another value is community, you can put community under Monday and, and so on with all the other ones. So that way it gives you another prompt. So when you're planning your posts in advance, you, whatever you post on Sundays, you remember, does this somehow reflect the integrity value? It doesn't always have to be it, but it gives you that extra prompt. So if you're completely blank, <laughs> it could be just as simple as saying, our companies, you know, like our company, one of our company values is integrity. And here is an example of, or you share an article on integrity or whatever it would be. And you can also have the theme as well. So I'm going to show you an example here of um, calendar filled out. So a core value per day of the week and not necessary, but it helps. If, if you can't think of what content to put in, it helps to have a theme for each day of the week. This is, uh, this is, uh, has been often used, commonly used in Instagram, for example. <clears throat> and how often should you post? That's the other question. How often? It depends on the platform that you use. Uh, the more you post, the more visibility you're going to get. So if you, if you have the, if you have the capacity to post as much as possible, do that. Uh, in some cases, daily works really well. One thing, if you are on Instagram and you are on Facebook, live streams are encouraged. The more you do, the more visibility your page, uh, your page gets. So that's another thing I think Carly was asking earlier. The Facebook page doesn't get a lot of views. If you start doing lives in the Facebook uh, page, it will slowly get increased, um, increased followers in viewership. So that's something to, to keep in mind. You can post five times a week, every other day, or three times a week, or a week, or even once a week. But as I was saying earlier, you want to make sure that your account looks active, even if it's just once a week, one post a week. But you want, you want to make sure that there is that consistency and that you, you show that you're alive, that you're actually in business. So here's an example of uh, daily theme hashtags. These are just examples. So you can, you can select uh, a theme that works for you for each day of the week as a prompt. You don't necessarily have to use the hashtag uh, if you're using a platform that doesn't require them, but it helps you as a prompt to Oh, Fridays, let's say Friday, Friday vibes. Okay, so this is what I'll, we, we can post things on Fridays that are about that. Uh, if you're in the fitness industry, maybe, you know, post on Fridays things that are fitness related that are more, um, or maybe it's in the wellness industry, but you can put something that is fitness related on, on Friday. So every Friday you have that recurring theme. So recurring themes are good because people tend to want to know when the next one is coming up, kind of like tips. So how do we do this? Here is the, we're going to talk about having a monthly template checklist. Okay. So you want to start by creating a theme for the month. M make sure you mark your important dates and holidays first. So those days are taken up. And then you set your core values, like I said before, for each day of the week, you choose once a month post topics. So your post, even though you can have daily themes for each day of the week, you can have posts that are just happening once a month. So there's some things you don't want to talk about every week. So you, you can have more variety. So it's not always every seven days, exactly same thing. You can have different, um, 
you can help post that. Let's say once a month we go behind the scenes or once a month we do a testimonial, we, show, we showcase a, a client, for example. So that doesn't have to be every week. And then you can, and then you decide for what your daily and weekly themes as you want them to be repeated. Okay, so here's an example of a, uh, a monthly schedule set up. So prompts of what you could do. So you see at the bottom, we have um, values and also kind of the theme of the week, uh, the theme of the day. So like say on Mondays, for example, uh, leadership is a core value, but motivation and mindset are, are the two um, kind of interchanging. Every other week, there is a different, one week is a motivation quote uh, and, and the other week is an inspiration quote or uplifting quote or empowerment. But you see how the Mondays have that recurring theme. If you look at Tuesday, it seems like, okay, so Tuesdays for promotion or for FAQ or for tips. And then on Wednesdays is where you can ask a question to your audience. And then every other week, it could be where you're the expert and you share your information and you, and you, and, and you talk more about a specific topic that is related again to what you do into your industry. So this is how you establish yourself as the expert and make yourself the go-to in your business, in your, in your industry. So I hope this is making sense. You also want to keep, you know, want to have some, some lightness to things. Maybe your business is always light. So you want to have a variety of everything um, across the board. So you can create your own calendar and start with, you know, by starting to have your values and having your themes of the week. And then maybe once a month themes, it's not going to be so difficult to come up with content ideas. Build a content bank. So you don't have to come up with the, those ideas all at the moment. As you get the ideas, as you see material out there, as you see posts that maybe you want to share from somewhere else, start collecting this stuff and find a place to put it all um, together. It could be on Google, <coughs> it could be on your hard paper uh, folders, whichever way, but you want to start collecting so that when you need it, you can just pull it and post it or schedule it. Okay. The other thing you can do is you can create it. Obviously, so you can, if you collect it, you're collecting it. You don't have to create it. You're just getting it from somewhere else and putting it and saving it, but you can also create, you can create it yourself or you can delegate the creation of your content and then you want to store it, obviously. <laughs> And importance that whatever you post is of quality. You want quality content, quality, quality images, quality videos, whatever you put out there, make it the best that you can make it. I'm not saying that you have to spend money on expensive material, but just go with the highest quality that you can afford. Make sure your what you post reflects your brand, have variety. And if you don't have any time, it's like, it's like, oh, this sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> it's okay. A lot of us don't have time. There is something you can do in that schedule. And I know that this is one of the, the common, um, the common phrases, the common things I hear is like, I don't have the time and I don't have time to schedule. And the truth is, yes, you do. And if you're, if you're not able to outsource this, to have somebody else do it for you and you have to do it yourself, the key is to what I call batch, block and batch. Okay, so you block, you can do this once a month, you take half a day and you can schedule a whole month in advance with just half a day. If you just do it all in advance, if you have all your material collected, um, it really doesn't take that much longer. And once you have that template that you created in the first place, it's easy to just kind of drop where you want your, your social media to be. Important to have consistency. So you don't want to have these big gaps where you post for three days and then you're gone for five months. So make sure that there's always that consistency that's happening, not only through the posting time, but also in what your posts are about as well. make it super easy it's really three steps when it comes to social to, to to social media you gather your content to post you schedule it and be consistent 
Okay. So I'm going to skip on this. Uh, yeah, just because we don't have time to go into that. But I want to share some tools and resources with you before we go, uh, before I end. And most of these are free. This is for DIY. You can do it yourself. So social media schedulers, you can use Hootsuite, Buffer, Later, Appy. Those are all uh, platforms where you can schedule all your content up to a year. And you can forget about it, but you don't want to forget about it. You still want to stay on top of it. Now, I know it was suggested earlier that there are some sites that you can use where they automatically post um, content on your behalf, but you don't really get to vet it. So I'd be very careful with sites like that because you want to make sure that they're always in line with what, you, what your business is about. And you also don't want to rely on those 100% because then your voice gets lost. Your, your, your business brand and gets lost because it's always somebody else's material versus your own material. So you want to make sure that you do put your, your content out there. Okay, so free images to, for your posts, you can, you can get them at Pixabay, Pexels, Unsplash, and free images, all those, .com. if you go to .com for each one of those free images, no royalty to pay and they're really high quality, so you can get those. And easy post design app. So very easy to make a beautiful post with just the with these apps. For example, Canva, I think, is one of the most popular ones nowadays. But say, I don't want to learn how, I don't want to know how to use Canva. I don't have time to learn how to use Canva. It's too complicated. Word Swag, it, you can download it on your phone, and it it, it, it's amazing how easy it is. You can literally create a post while you're sitting at the red light. <laughs> Not that you should be using your phone, but if you're waiting at, let's say you're at Starbucks and waiting in line to get your coffee, it, you, you probably can create two, three, four, five posts while you're waiting in line just through your phone. Super easy, super simple. It's literally just, it, and Word Swag gives you access directly to, um, to Pixabay and those free images. So you don't even have to have your own images. And it has all the beautiful fonts and everything creates for you. So check that out. Color Story is another one if you use stories uh, on Instagram and Facebook. And Grid Post is another app as well. And last but not least, I know you can do this. So I know I've covered a lot. And if you want, you can have access to, um, I can, if you want the slides of those resources, just download them here. The link is at the bottom. And that's all I have to have to for you. So if you have any questions, let me know. I'm here and thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Francesca. You've uh, given us a whole ton of information. Uh, I'm, I was overwhelmed to begin, begin with. Now I'm doubly overwhelmed. <laughs> uh, but people who are much more into social media than I am, I'm quite sure you built on their knowledge. And that's just wonderful. Uh, Audience, on behalf of Francesca and I, I'd just like to thank you for joining us this evening. We much appreciate you uh, investing your Tuesday evening in us, and we hope we've given you a monstrous uh, return on your uh, inv time invested. So uh, I just have to say good night. Uh, Francesca, you have the last word. Well, good night. Go out and don't be afraid to use social media, and I'm more than happy to answer any questions privately if you want to stay on. All right, I'm going to stop record. Anyone who wants to reach out to Francesca, do so at the uh, link that you see on this uh, slide. Good night, all. Thank you for joining us and see some of you uh, tomorrow afternoon. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks, Francesca. Bye. Thank you, Francesca. Thank you. Bye bye. Thanks, Thank for you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Francesca. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>